Follow for here, Good evening. This is our news for tonight. Firstly, Premier Toki Talangi and his delegation are preparing to head off to the Pacific Island Forum Leaders Meeting. The official delegation is set to include six officials who will accompany Premier Toki Talangi, two media personnel and five additional members of New Zealand-based investors. The Pacific Island Forum leaders are set to arrive in New Zealand for the 42nd Pacific Island Forum Leaders Meeting. The meeting will be held from the 6th to the 9th of September. This will, will also signal the start of New Zealand's year-long tenure as chair of the forum, taking over from Vanuatu. The theme for this year's forum is converting potential into prosperity. This year's meeting will also focus on how government leaders business people and stakeholders in the Pacific can work together to promote sustainable economic development and build on the region's strengths, particularly in fisheries, tourism, education and energy. This year also marks 40 years since the forum was established. In addition to leaders from the Pacific, New Zealand will be hosting a number of senior level guests including the Secretary General of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon. European Commission President Jose Manuel Barroso and Commonwealth Secretary General Kamala Sharma. The final day of the forum will also coincide with the opening match of the Rugby World Cup where forum leaders will join in watching the All Blacks vs Tonga. Newest official delegation to the forum will depart the island tomorrow. Aggregate chip production has been stored following an accident at the quarry yesterday. The machine that is used to produce aggregate chips is now on the repair. Details into the incident have indicated that the accident was caused due to a malfunction to a front-end loader that was in use. The loader, which was on an incline, stopped working, forcing all operations to lock, and the driver was unable to stop or veer the loader away. It then went on to collide and hit the support column, collapsing conveyors 2 and 3. Repairs are in progress, but this latest mishap will not affect services, as the Public Works Department Director Dev Talangi says there is enough aggregate materials in stock on the island. He says that it will take approximately three weeks before the aggregate production machine is fully repaired. The department is also looking into the incident to address issues of safety, especially working with heavy machinery. Fortunately, no one was hurt in this accident. The Nui Tourism International Wahoo Fishing Competition has been deemed a success as it wraps up today. Tourism Director Hayden Porter says this was the first such event hosted by Nui Tourism and they managed to draw in some 27 fishermen from overseas, with 25 of them as anglers on board local chartered boats. We turned up to the wharf today to see how the competition was going. We've had um, a really good uh, reception in terms of the sponsorships we received for both the canoe uh, and the, uh, the boat uh, sections uh, as well. And I think it was really, really nice to see so many canoes uh, involved over a four-day period. Uh, they were very, very competitive, <laughs> can I say. The local some competition was really out there and also uh, it'll be great to see a bit of money and gear change hands as a, as a result of those that uh, came through. Uh, so I think the canoes in the course of four days pulled out 777 kgs worth of, uh, of fish uh, which was wahoo, sailfish and yellowfin tuna uh, and a few skipjack tuna, dog tooth tuna. Uh, and the boats, unfortunately for them, were a fair way behind, uh, but still uh, there was over a tonne of fish uh, came out of Nui waters in four days uh, fishing, uh, which will all go to good use. Uh, the local restaurants are suddenly uh, filled with fish again because there was a little bit of a drought there, uh, and it just gets that, um, that money circulating around the, the local economy as well. Just to put it into perspective, a group like this uh, is worth close to $100,000 for the local e economy in terms of what they inject in. You know, they're, they're um, uh, eating here breakfast, lunch, dinner, afternoon tea. Evening, they tend to enjoy uh, a couple of a couple of quiets with, um, and it's nice that they've been mixing with quite a few of the locals as well on that front. Uh, so, 
uh, you know, that's that's fantastic. And uh, it, it just it just makes sure that we can, um, you know, keep interest there for next year as well because everyone now knows, well, gee, you know, my restaurant was full last night. Uh, they've hired cars, they've been out to the tracks, they've done all sorts of things. Uh, so, yeah, for for our first year, um, really, really successful. Uh, we learnt a lot that we can improve on as well, uh, and next year will be bigger and better again. Uh, Hayden says that this is the beginning of what will hopefully be an annual event and has been a learning experience for the department that would be helpful in plans to expand the events further. You know, having some larger... Uh, some larger boats, some more boats would certainly uh, allow us to expand it a wee bit. Just to put it in perspective, we sold this trip out uh, within a very, very short space of time and, uh, and didn't need to market it. It was, all from where to, it was essentially all from where to mouth through our contacts and, and networks and so on. So, um, uh, you know, if anything, that hampered a little bit. Uh, the weather obviously played a part. We had to call in the weather day, but um, that's fishing. So, yeah, it can be good one day, bad, bad another. Uh, it can be good one week, terrible another week. So, <laughs> you know, chances are it'll be absolutely brilliant next week <laughs> after they've gone. But, you know, you live and learn from that. Uh, you can, and you can't plan for what Mother Nature throws at you as well. There is not much that one can do with the weather, but there is still interest from some to return for future events. Uh, certainly a few guys plan to, plan to return. Uh, we're fairly strategic as well. A few of the prizes also happen to be return trips uh, or accommodation or whatever, so, so it ensures they um, keep, uh, keep coming back. But most important, uh, we know that they'll tell other people. So if they don't return themselves, they'll at least tell other people. So we've really made a big effort to make sure they've had a great time. Uh, and, uh, you know, these fishing is just a conduit to... to uh, get these guys involved in the community and seeing things and, and, and doing everything else on top of the fishing as well, which means that you know there's a lot more uh, uh, interest um, and there's a lot more people that they can tell things about as well. You know, some of them going, they've hopped off the fishing boat and they're going out on the whale watch this afternoon. You know, they had a half an hour turnaround and bang, they're, they're out doing that. Uh, a few of the guys have had extra charters uh, as well on top of the um, on top of the fishing charter, so no, it is it's been fantastic. The official closing and distribution of overall prizes will be given out tonight, and Nui Tourism are hoping for a bigger and better competition next year. And it is now confirmed the Nui Rugby Union Sevens tournament will go ahead. Despite a slow response from teams, there are now five teams confirmed for the competition. This is the third and final tournament for 7s and 10s rugby for this year, with a good lineup expected from the Alofi Makos, Tuwapa, Hakupu, Liku La Kepumdalo, and the new team Alofi Cavaliers. The first game to kick off on Saturday will be between Hakupu and Liku La Kepumdalo, starting at 2.30 in the afternoon. We wish all the teams all the best. And before we conclude our news for tonight, don't forget to check out the Tuwapa Uhomotu Show Day this coming Saturday.